Oh my God, I don't know if you've heard, it's terrible. This sweet little boy, I think he's 14, his name is Ahmed, and he is from Africa, and he has come to this country for a better life, and he was at home tinkering away with a clock. And, and it wasn't an analog clock, though I'm sure he could make that with its little 7,000 little pieces, but this was an LED clock, and he sat tinkering away with rib ribbon wires and, and uh, nine volt emergency batteries and AC power, and, and snooze buttons and his LED screen and he went to his school I think he maybe had a robe on like a Bedouin and he said teacher I have showed you this clock because I want you to be proud of the work that I do for you and the teacher just went god damn it we got a terrorist here and all the kids went no god damn Muslims I hate towel heads and then the police kicked down the door. What's going on in here? The him, he brought a bomb to school because we all are scared of Islam and we're scared of culture and we're rednecks and America sucks. And then the cops go, get down on the ground, get down, because the cops are psycho with power. They're shooting black dudes everywhere and they hate Muslims. And they, they put him in handcuffs and go, you're going to jail, boy. And he's like, I just wanted to make a clock, please. Please help. I just want to learn and to become American. Shut up, boy. Shut up, you terrorist. Luckily, the same people intervened and said, stop. And they said, look, he's innocent. You guys are being fascist redneck jerks. And they get and uncuff him, by the way. The whole world came together and said, effusively beautifully things like um, you went to impress your teacher but you ended up impressing the world and MIT invited him you're our favorite student you can you can come here you can uh, Mark Zuckerberg said I'd like you to intern here don't ever give up don't ever let those jerks keep you down the world needs to be more open to Islam let's have more Muslim immigrants for example uh, we had Hillary chiming in saying you're a wonderful sweet angel I want to kiss your ass um, Barack Obama literally said cool clock Ahmed why don't you bring it to the White House? He always has the coolest one. And that was the end of that. He's got a college fund now. Microsoft sent him, I think, $10,000 worth of digital awesomeness that he can invent. Uh, that's not what happened. It's a cool narrative if your life is a cartoon, but here in the real world, we're, we should be a little more dubious, especially when we're at war with radical Islam, you fucking pussies. Here's the truth. He did not make it, obviously. Look at it. Look at the way it's shaped. It looks like a fucking bomb. And thank you, teacher, for being a little paranoid. In a state of war, when someone named Mohammed, especially you're about to hear about his family, when he shows up with something that looks like a bomb, ideally, you don't just run, but I'd understand if you did, but call the cops, call the bomb squad, get him detained. And he wasn't arrested, okay? He was cuffed because he was acting like an asshole and being passive aggressive because this whole thing is a hoax. It's all a prank. And what drives me nuts about it, besides the fact that the president, hey, cool clock, kid, you want to bring it down to Big Al's and I'll fucking bang on the jukebox? Hey, sit on it. No, the part that drives me nuts is that they're so stupid and lazy about it. You could just fart out a, a hoax like this and the whole world falls for it. Look how easy it is to make this stupid bomb clock. What was that, 20 seconds? Dial it in or what, dude? Um, so I spoke to Dr. Thomas Talbot. He is a uh, not an engineer, often called an engineer. He's just a doctor who's a tech geek. And he saw that and immediately went, that's factory made. They don't, and even if it was a kit, the kits don't come like that. That has serial number on it. It's got an embossed uh, American flag. Uh, and it's a clock from the 70s. Every tech nerd immediately chimed in and said, what's going on here? Although the tech community who stands to make money from all this, like 
Maker Magazine, who can now sell, assemble your own clocks. They went, rock on, dude, you rock. And I talked to Dr. Talbot about that because it was confusing how, how many people were duped and how many people were willfully ignorant of what's going on. They had perceptual blindness. Show a picture of this device to 10 people off the street and ask them, what do you think this is? And what do you think people are going to say? Not every, you said as electronics are esoteric, but my point is make magazine, popular science and gadget. These people are in the business of tech or in the business, make magazine makes it's in business of people that may, it's supposed to be the maker community. And they couldn't see in three seconds what this was. I did. So to be uh, in, in all, uh, what, what do you call that? Uh, uh, full disclosure, uh, this is my second try at making this video because I saw Ezra Levant put out one at the same time and it's so much better that I had to scrap the first one and I highly recommend you check his out. It's pictured here. And I learned something new about the family. I already, I already knew all about the dad. I knew that he ran for president of Sudan twice, even though Sudan's a dictatorship, that's impossible. I know he writes effusive things about himself on his own website that Vox picks up and takes his fact that he's sometimes amusing and constantly baffles his uh, debate opponent. I knew, speaking of debates, that he went to a trial that Terry Jones put on where the accused was the Quran, and he drove down, Ahmed's dad drove down to defend the Quran and lost, unfortunately. They burnt it. Uh, this is after, by the way, the government begged him not to. That's what cowards we are. We won't even let Terry Jones burn one copy of the Quran. No! <laughs> Uh, he also had a ridiculous debate with Robert Spencer, who ate him alive, as Spencer's want to do. It's hard to follow, but he goes on these rambling rants where he says, Oh, Muhammad was with a young girl, but that's not true. But it, back then, it's okay. And he's, he, the guy's dumb. The whole family's stupid. And they duped us. This punk punked the president. His sister was already expelled for saying she wanted to blow up the school. And when I think it was a Daily Beast uh, did this, they don't go, well, did you try to blow up the school? No, because we don't do that anymore. When we hear about someone in a hijab getting expelled for saying they want to blow up the school, we go, what a xenophobic school. Because you obviously wouldn't say anything like that. That never happens. Their uncle owns a corporation called Twin Towers that was incorporated in 2014. I mean, these guys don't even have to try anymore. They just dial it in. So they're suing the school despite all the presence and attention and everything that happened. I mean, this boy was stunned at how successful his prank was. He even goes, I'm going viral. Check, check him out here talking buck tooth about all the people that are following him. I've seen Mark Zuckerberg, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and I am pleased that they are a part of the action and the movement. Now the problem with this is, when you're lazy about a hoax, you're going to get caught, especially when you get law involved and you start suing people, because people don't want to pay. So they start looking into you. Guess what, dickheads? You committed fraud, and when you accepted money for it, you created a much bigger criminal act. You see, it's only a misdemeanor to bring in something that looks like a bomb and freak everyone out, which is what he did, which is why he was detained. Not sure why he was let go. Still haven't figured that out, cops. You should have been harsher. But here's Judge Napolitano talking about the the now two crimes they've done. This is no longer just a tiny thing. You accepted money from your lies. That's a much bigger deal. It now appears as though this was a purposeful hoax for whatever reason we don't know. If the Which parents- Which is the theory of their case. Not that he was bringing a bomb to school, but that he was br trying to play a trick on people. Correct. If, if the parents were involved in the hoax, now you have a fraud going on. They enjoy when we kowtow to them. It's called, uh, I wrote it down here, it's called al Takia. The deception, or the Islamic word for concealing or disguising one's beliefs, convictions, ideas, feelings, opinions, and or strategy. This pranking, this lying, is an integral part of jihad. So when you lie down before Islam and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, they don't go, okay, that was pretty reasonable. We're even now. They're not reasonable people. It's not a reasonable religion. When you lie down and kowtow, they get empowered. So we have to... We have to screw our heads on Twitter. <laughs> We're losing our heads here, figuratively and literally. Let's get some common sense. Let's get some courage and stand up to radical Islam. I'm not scared of Islamophobia. I'm scared of Islamophobia phobia.
Thank <laughs> you.